Here we have an interesting example for you on how to calculate the angular momentum before and after an event. Now here there's no collision involved but something very interesting. Let's say that you have um, like a hockey puck on an air on an air free table or let's say with zero resistance table and it's going around attached to a string going through a little hole and you're holding it and the, the puck is just going around around around. Let's say the puck the mass of the puck is a half a kilogram. The radius of its circular motion is 0.3 meters and the initial angular velocity is 2 radians per second. Now let's say that you get underneath the table and you pull on it until the radius has now reduced itself to half the original radius. What do you expect is going to happen? Question is, is angular momentum conserved in this case? And of course you want to say angle momentum is always conserved no matter what you do. And that's indeed the case here. You pull this down so that the puck goes in a little bit closer to half the distance away from the hole. And yes, angular momentum is conserved, which means we can say that L initial equals L final. So what makes up the initial angular momentum of the situation? Well, we have a puck, mass half a kilogram, revolving around that hole at an angular velocity of 2 radians per second when the radius is 0.3 meters. So we can say that the angular momentum initially is I times omega initial. All right, so what is the I of the puck? Well, it's, uh, it's of course the point mass at a distance r away from the uh, point of rotation. So we can say that it's equal to m r squared times omega initial. And what is that going to equal? Well, that's going to equal the final angular momentum, which is going to be I times omega final. So is the I still the same? No, of course the I is going to be different now because now the puck is only at half the distance away from there. So if we call this R initial, then we can say that this is equal to M R final squared times omega final. And that is of course what we're looking for. We're looking for the final angular velocity. Now notice on both sides of the equation we have an M, so the M definitely cancels out. Now we can go ahead and replace for RF, we can replace that RF is equal to one half R initial. So we have R initial squared times omega initial equals R final, which is one half R initial. We can square that times omega final. Of course, I'm running out of board space down here, so let me come up here. I'm now going to multiply this or at least work this out. So we have R initial squared omega initial is equal to one quarter R initial squared times omega final. So I'm simply squaring this term right here. Now notice that we have an R initial squared on both sides. So we can cancel that out and multiply both sides by four and it's have four times omega initial equals omega final or omega final, the angle of velocity final is equal to four times the angle of velocity initial. So if the initial angle of velocity was 2 radians per second, when I pull this puck in, so now that it's only half the radius, the final will be 8 radians per second, right? So here we go, omega final is equal to 4 times omega initial, which is 4 times 2 radians per second, which is equal to 8 radians per second. So by making the radius half of what it was before by pulling the string in so that the string length is now only half of what it was before, the angle of velocity will be four times as much. Kind of surprising, but how do we know that for sure? Because we know that angular momentum is conserved. And that's how you do that problem.